Hello and welcome back. I'm Dr. Mark D. Baldwin and today's lecture is on Walt Whitman. Whitman's life and work explored the tension between his faith in democratic equality and his belief in individual rebellion against society's restrictions. This Jeffersonian idealism manifests itself in the quest for a perfect state. Central to Whitman is the spirit of equality and how man can attain the greatest possible freedom within the limits of man's and nature's law. We can see transcendentalism at work in Whitman's love of the commonplace of nature and of divine purpose. Just as Thoreau feels that reality is mythical and fabulous, and just as Emerson believes that all material objects are emblematic of the over-soul, Whitman sees a moral purpose underlying everything. After reading Emerson's 1854 essay entitled The Poet, Whitman said, I was simmering, simmering, simmering. Emerson brought me to a boil. Please be sure to watch my lecture on Transcendentalism for a more thorough discussion of this topic. Building on both the Romantic and Transcendentalist traditions, Whitman created the archetypal personality for America, a man both individual and of the masses. His was almost a selfhood of every man, with the paradoxically opposed ideals of democracy, individuality, and equality in each person. He borrowed a central metaphor from Hindu poetry, that the self can become identical with all other selves in the universe, regardless of time and space. The self finds itself only by making the journey, as in Whitman's Song of the Open Road, Crossing Brooklyn Ferry, and Passage to India. Whitman loved life, believing that all life is a miracle. I believe a leaf of grass is no less than the journey work of the stars, he wrote. I celebrate myself and sing myself in what I assume you shall assume, for every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. Whitman is constantly attempting to combine spirit and matter. I am the poet of the body, and I am the poet of the soul. A forerunner of the symbolists, Whitman breaks with conventions and suggests the inexpressible by means of photographic images strung together in free verse, long sentences seemingly in search of their subject matter. A pre-modernist, Whitman uses phrases rather than metrical feet as units of rhythm. His poetic lines grow organically with each part in proportion to the whole through themes and melodies arranged symphonically. His diction combines learned words with coined and slang words, thus creating a democratic language. Another modern aspect of Whitman's style is his use of parataxis. There's no apparent grouping or relationship to the parts in his poetry. The poet's eye moves from one object to another with no attempt to relate the various parts to each other. Things are separate and undisturbed, democratic and free. Whitman lets the real world in with a rush of sensibility, a tidal imagery that the innocent eye observes unquestioningly. Leaves of Grass is an archetypal book of poetry, a New World epic that portrays American Americans through Whitman's cosmic consciousness, surveying the universe in terms of himself. Whitman finds and acknowledges the relationships among the most disparate things and relates them to himself as poet and as archetypal man. Like William Wordsworth's Prelude, Leaves of Grass is a subjective epic of heroic introspection. And just as Whitman prophesied, he has become the quintessential American shaping the way we look at and create the world. If you want me again, look for me under your boot soles. As in Melville, Whitman's two commanding images are the ocean and the procession of life. But the difference is that Whitman is positive. The sea is the old mother out of whose cradle endlessly rocking pours forth life. And that procession of life is primarily happy and active as in Crossing Brooklyn Ferry. The reader can almost feel the sea in Whitman's verses with their long, cumulative, wave-like swellings and recedings. This natural reconciliation of opposites recalls Yeats's There and James's Circuit of Life that I discuss in greater detail in my Hawthorne lecture. 
please watch my reading Whitman and Dickinson lecture for a sample reading of some of his poetry. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.